This is recording five for Project Echo. Hello, my name is Rylan Mercer, and I'm the owner of Mercer Mechanics here in Neo City 11. Today, I am finishing my entry for the main division of the original Mecha Contest, or OMC. Echo, or the Elite Covert Hybrid Operative, has been meticulously engineered from the ground up to redefine what's possible on a tight, independent budget. Before finishing the surfaces, it's time to finally address those weak ankles. The entire mech will need to be disassembled for finishing, so I went ahead and fully broke down the legs. I'm moving forward with the repeated suggestion of adding a thin layer of material to the ball of the joint. This will decrease tolerance when fitted to the socket. Mounting the ball 90 degrees from its current orientation may have avoided my issues, but this solution worked in the end. While disassembling the rest of the machine, I found the hips had lost range of motion after adding new mechanisms. A quick conduit reroute solved the issue. Now begins the fun of surface prep. Along with making sure every component is individually mounted for use in a spray booth and kiln, every surface needs to be cleaned of oil and debris. Every mating surface that will need to be slotted or rotated during reassembly has to be protected from incoming chemical processes. And yes, this includes every single joint, every single thread, every hole and every mount. It's helpful to use various masking substances and products designed for the task, but sometimes you can get away with cramming in some disposable material. I usually clean parts before masking because it's a day-long process, but I decided to use these nearly expired wipes since they're more convenient than a full wash cycle. With all parts cleaned and mounted, they're ready for a general application of metallic ceramic nano coating. The substrate is passed through an electrostatic filter to charge the material, allowing it to deposit onto the components without clumping. This is my easy mode finish for everything. It sticks to all surfaces, reinforces it, and even allows for additional processes to be performed on top of it, as long as the surface has been set solid in a kiln first. As far as the machine is concerned, it's finished, but I still need to put hazard symbols and markings for the contract to make this federally compliant. Also, since this is a contest, we're going to push this bill to stand tall above the crowd. After dry brushing off residual nano coating, the surfaces are clean enough for more exquisite treatment. This special metallic ceramic nano coating has enough metal ions to allow for anodization, which will create a high density protective layer that significantly improves surface hardness. The process works on a spectrum, allowing a range of flexibilities, durabilities, and colors. 
I decided to use a cobalt-based electrolytic solution to increase wear resistance. Witness the transformation. Every effort was made to reinforce key structures that would efficiently benefit from the additional anodization process. This of course includes each of the three backpack modules for ECHO. Along with anodization, I decided to use electroplating to provide an additional layer of EMP protection to sensitive or critical components. Essentially, any systems that are mostly electronic or house onboard computers were coated with a reinforced copper alloy. There are also a few places with sensors and servos that I did not want susceptible to electrical damage. I was particularly cautious to add this layer to each of the three backpack modules, since they have very specific mechanisms that are critical to their functionality. And just to remain code compliant, all pistons were painted with standard safety yellow. Last but not least, it's time for the mech markings. Normally, I don't build large, complete machines. Mercer mechanics will typically fix machinery or make parts to order, so decals are not my strong suit. It's not too difficult though, and I recommend giving it a go if you've been hesitant with trying it out. Along with custom markings for the mech name, company, and contract, I've also used standard markings to designate hazard areas around Echo's design. In particular, I have warnings for the pistons, hot outlets, necessary equipment, and keeping certain sensors clean and clear. The biggest warnings are on the nuclear jetpack. There is only one component that doesn't have any markings, and it's mostly because there wasn't room for any. Can you guess which assembly is still clean? I should have more than enough markings to satisfy federal requirements, and hopefully this will be enough for the OMC contract as well. All in all, there are approximately 46 decals used around the mech. I think it's time to actually call this finished. One more protective coating, just to keep everything looking polished for the remainder of the contract, should be enough to move on to final assembly. Unfortunately, I always forget that masking and unmasking are two entire steps that take forever. So let's speed this along for the sake of brevity. As a note to anyone who is taking inspiration from my process, I would recommend keeping any mount, putty, clips, and so on for future builds. There's no reason not to reuse these resources until they're unusable. And with that, we're finally, actually ready for the last assembly. The 
The Elite Covert Hybrid Operative, or ECHO, was designed from the ground up, inspired by a singular, unique idea that could push the bounds of what is currently possible in mech design. This concept of maneuverability, agility, and compact structure was only possible with the integration of its keystone feature, the rocket roller blades. The roller blades feature shock absorbers to protect the rocket system that provides Echo with its forward acceleration. Calf pistons provide shock absorption and joint control during operation, while pneumatic ankle pistons provide roll control and support the ball socket joints three degrees of freedom. The knees utilize rotational interface optimizers and interlocking joint armor, while the thighs have additional double micro dampers for shock absorption. Rocket arms with fully articulated hands mount to upper arms in a design that mirrors the leg assemblies. Shoulder-mounted engines provide more than enough power to echo and additional attachments and can be overclocked to work as emergency thrusters. The hips, knees, shoulders, and elbows utilize three-pole brushless motors for compact power and mobility. Light armor plates, high tensile aero strips, gyroscopic sensors, and slipstream air blades provide Echo the aerodynamics necessary to maintain celerity. There are three modular back attachments, including a lithium powered jetpack, dual 20 mm autocannons, and a reconnaissance module for maximum information density. Regardless of the OMC's outcome, I'm proud of what I've created, a machine that shows innovation comes from determination and creativity. Thanks to everyone who supported this journey, and I hope to see you again down the road. This is Rai, signing off for the last time. Stay inspired. Support the Royal Archive for early access to records and to assist creators like me. End recording five.